Hello students, hope you are well and working hard to achieve your goals. So welcome to the commerce class. Today we will start our next chapter, chapter 6, partnership. So the learning objectives of this chapter are to understand the meaning and definition of partnership, characteristics of partnership, evaluation of partnership, its merits and demerits, difference between partnership and sole trade business, types of partners, who can become a partner, types of partnership, formation of partnership, registration of partnership, ideal partnership, touchstone of partnership, rights and obligations of partners and last implied authority of a partner. So today we will discuss our first four topics that are meaning and definition of partnership, its characteristics and evaluation, its merits and demerits and difference between partnership and sole trade business. So first of all we will discuss our key terms. So our first term is partner minor so a person who has not completed 18 years of age is called minor next is partner so individual who joins with other individuals in an arrangement arrangement means partnership where gains and losses risks and rewards are shared among the partners is called partner so there are various examples of the partnership firms that i right here so like apple and mastercard amazon and american express unicef and target nike and apple and starbucks and spotify are some examples that comes or that enters into the partnership act and provides the goods and services to their customers so now we will discuss the meaning of partnership so partnership refers to that form of organization in which two or more then two persons willingly join and agree to run some lawful business is called partnership. So the persons who enter into the partnership are individually called partners and collectively a firm. And the name under which they carry on a business is called firm name. For example, Maruti Udyog Limited. As in this, the partnership is between the Indian government and the Japan Suzuki Motor Corporation. Both are jointly had and doing the business in a Maruti Udyog Limited and provides the name as firm name called Maruti Udyog Limited. So next, a partnership is a combination of capital, talent and experience of the partners. So next one is the characteristics of the partnership. So our first characteristic is agreement between two or more partners. So partnership is an agreement between two or more partners and the minimum partners or the minimum number of partners is two and the maximum number of partners in case of banking business is 10 and in other business or in other case of business it is 20. Next one is legal business. So the partner or the business carried on by the partnership firm must be legal. It means that Stealing or smuggling are not the legal business in the eyes of law. Next is contractual business. So the partnership contract is made through their mutual relationship. It means minor or lunatics cannot become a partners in the partnership firm. Next one characteristic is profit motive. So the business carried on by the partnership firm must have pro motive to earn profits. Next is principal agent relationship. So it means that just an owner is responsible. It means that just an owner is responsible for any contract entered into by his agent operating within the limits of his authority. Similarly, a partner can bind all other partners with his activities that are performed in the partnership firm. Next is general characteristics. So first one is unlimited liability. So every partner of the firm is individual and jointly liable for the dues and debts of the firm. Next is no separate legal entity. So partnership and the partners are one in the eyes of law. They're, they have no separate legal entity in the partnership firm. Next is at most good faith. So partners must integrate their efforts and works as a team with utmost good faith in each other. Next is restriction on transfer of interest. 
so the partners cannot transfer their interest that is share in the business to other persons a new partner can be admitted or other old partners may retire only with the mutual consent of the all partners next is definite name of the firm so a partnership must have a definite name means specific name that they hold in the partnership business next is mutual agency so every partner is the agent of the firm and so those partners are the mutual agent of each other next is non transferability of shares so no partner can transfer his share in the partnership to any other person he can do so only with the consent of other partners that are included in the partnership business next characteristic is registration of partnership so according to partnership act 1932 it is not compulsory to get partnership form registered however the partners prefer to get partnership form registered because of certain advantages next is only individual as a partner so an important characteristic of partnership is that only an individual can be a partner and not any firm or institution is a part of the partnership firm so this is all about the characteristics of partnership next is evaluation of partnership its merits and demerits so first of all we will discuss its merits or advantages of partnership so first one is easy to start as there is no complicated legal procedure to start a partnership so it is very easy to start a partnership firm next is sufficient capital so partnership has more capital resources as compared to the sole trade so it can even better get amount of loans from other institutions on easy terms and conditions next is specialization in management so work is divided in the partnership in accordance with the scientific management principles and work is given to the partners as per their capabilities and abilities they have and they can attain specialization in their work next is balanced decision so decisions are taken jointly by consulting each other therefore the partnership is able to take balance decisions next is secrecy so partnership does not have to get its accounts published like joint stock company so it can easy to maintain secrecy in their business next is advantage of unlimited liability so the limited or the liability of the partners is unlimited therefore they can take at most care in discharging their duties in the partnership firm next is combined resources so in partnership partners capital energy knowledge experience are jointly and efficiently and combinedly used in the partnership firm next is flexibility so partnership firms have flexibility as the expansion of the business capital and the number of partners can be changed according to the situation without any legal obstacles and with the mutual consent between the partners next is registration not compulsory so in the partnership according to the partnership act 1932 there is not compulsory to register the partnership firm next is more suitable for risky business so according to the saying more risk more profit so greater profits can be earned in partnership by taking more risks by the partners next is personal relations and good faith so due to limited number of partners they have direct relations with their customers and employees and maintain good relations in the firm next is protection to minors so a minor cannot become a partner but with the consent of all the partners a minor can be admitted with limited liability and he can admit it to profits of the business share the profits of the business of the firm so this is all about the merits or advantages of partnership next we will discuss the demerits of partnership or disadvantages that the partnership have so first one is difficulty in transfer of interest 
so no partner can transfer his interest in partnership without the mutual consent of all the partners next is delay in decision making so decision making in partnership requires consent of all the partners and it results in delay in the decision making and the important decisions are left next is unlimited liability so the liability is unlimited in partnership and even the personal assets of the partners may be used to meet the firm's debts and liabilities next is instability so death of a partner insanity or insolvency means ends the partnership next is responsibility after winding up so in this responsibility of partners does not end until they have or they are given public notice of winding up of the partnership and then their responsibility is finished next is conflicts and frictions so there are conflicts and frictions that can arise as every partner has a right to manage the partnership next is limited resources and capital so partnership has a larger resources as compared to the sole trade but with the expansion of business these resources become insufficient next is more expenses so since the burden of expenditure is borne by all and not by an individual so therefore partners spend carelessly as they feel they as individuals are not allowed to pay or to bear the losses of the firm next is risk of implied authority so every partner is a representative of the firm and any dishonest or in efficient partner may cause losses for other partners through his misdeeds next is effects of mutual differences so every partner knows about the secrets and records of the partnership so in case of conflicts he may pass these secrets to the competitors so these are some disadvantages of the partnership firm that have so next and the last topic is difference between partnership and sole trade business so our first basic difference is act so partnership is registered under the partnership act 1932 and there is no separate act of a sole trade business next is distribution of profits and losses so in a partnership business profits and losses are distributed among partners as per partnership deed but in a sole trade business there is a no distribution of profits and losses as distribution of profits and losses goes to one person only next is capital so in a partnership there is a larger capital due to the large number of persons or partners are included in the business and in a sole trade business there is a limited capital due to single person is included in the business next is scope so in a partnership it has a very wide scope as it has a large number of persons and wide scope of business but in a sole trade it has a limited scope of business activities next is agreement so partnership there is a agreement between the partners but there is no need of agreement in the sole trade business next is number of members so in a partnership there is a minimum two members that are required to start a business and maximum 20 in case of other business and 10 in case of banking business so in the sole trade business only one member is required to start a business next is secrecy so due to large number of members there is lesser secrecy in is maintained in a partnership business but due to single and one person is included there is maximum secrecy that is possible in the sole trade business next is scale of operations so partnership is suitable for medium sized business because scope for expansion is greater than sole trade business and sole trade business is suitable for small size scale of business only next is registration so partnership is registered under the partnership act 1932 and there is no provision of registration in the sole trade business next is loss of absence so in the partnership there is 
and doesn't affect any business activities due to the absence of any person but in this in the sole trade business it affects the business activities if the person if the member of the sole trade business absence due to sickness or some other reason next is approval so in the partnership for decision making all the members are, are consulted in the decision making process but in a sole trade business there is no need for approval as decisions are taken by only one person next is establishment so there are some formalities that are required for establishment of business in a partnership business but in a sole trade there is no need for or no formalities are required for establishment of business next is quickness of decisions so in a partnership there is a lack of quick decisions because there is a need of taking a consultation by other partners also but in a sole trade decisions are very quick because only one person is involved in the business next is mutual agency so every partner is an agent of the firm and of other partners in the partnership business but there is no mutual agency in a sole trade business next is risks so in the partnership risks are shared by the partners and in the sole trade business only the owner alone bears all the risks of the business and the last one is management so every partner has a right to take part in the management of the firm in the partnership business and sold in the sole trade business the management is in the hands of only one person that is the owner of the business so this is all about today's topic now you have to write the question answers so first question is what is partnership explains the feature of partnership second explain the merits and demerits of partnership form of organization and the third question is distinguish between partnership and sole trade business so this is all about and you have to go through the various links so that you can write these question answers better